Do you remain optimistic? Absolutely, Brian. Of course, we're concerned valuations are a bit high, but th this song remains the same. It's it's Jerome Powell and the Fed. C can we call him Jerome Powerful? Because he is the one driving this, this stock market train. And as long as the Fed signals that it's not tightening, that it's not worried about inflation, and as long as Congress continues to spend, and they have plans with this infrastructure bill to spend, and corporations are responding with this reopen trade and capitalizing on it with strong earnings, why would this market continue to do anything other than what we've seen? I realize emotion is powerful and people see lofty levels, they see some higher prices, but look what happened last week. As soon as we had a mini, mini correction, money flowed back in and I think that's going to be the story for the summer. Well, if you like that, Mark, stay tuned later in the show for the for the morning RBI because it has to do with the amount of cash that is still out there. And the number might might blow everybody's mind. I don't want to give too much away because I want them to stick around. It's called the deep tees in the business. We're just kind of waiting people to, for them to hang on. How much money do you think there really is still sitting out there waiting to be put to use somewhere? Well, th those exact numbers are hard to find, but they're trillions corporate balance sheets, personal money market funds, and all those people that were too smart to buy into this rally, and there may be millions of them, who were saying, I don't believe in this rally. They're reluctantly coming off the sidelines, and we're seeing, we're seeing greed eventually replaces fear, the old girth trade, and that's what's happening to a lot of people saying, I'm going to buy on these dips. Last Monday and Tuesday, we were down 4%, and the market rebounded. And it's not stopping this morning. We saw the action overseas. So the liquidity and f for stock markets, liquidity is like oxygen. You get too much, you get too high. Yeah. Not enough and you're going to die. And for the markets, this liquidity is getting them high. You're rhyming all the time and right now, Mark. Oh, before we let you go, where do we put our money? Where, where can we make some dough? Well, I think We've never abandoned tech. What we did with our tech trade was broaden out to financials, and that's proven to be a good trade. I think that you can also look at the permanent impacts of the shift from COVID. I know everything is spiking, travel is spiking and things like that. But this move to the suburbs, this, this housing burst we're seeing, that's a permanent change. And when you buy a house, you need cars, you have families, you need two cars. And I think a good way to look at a long-term sustainable trend in that is to look at the auto parts. We like advanced auto. We like AutoZone. We've owned AutoZone. I, it's a little bit off its high right now. But I think when you look at the trend for people owning more cars and having to take two kids to school and not wanting to take mass transit, those cars are going to need replacements and parts. And that's a mega trend that I would suggest has legs. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.